Okay, let's start with In the Shadow of the Empire, or Emperor. Uh, this is... I'm going to start with the setup here. Now this little thing here, what you're supposed to be able to read from this, is enough to remind you of the rules here. Now, Red picked up the first draw. So they're going to be the Emperor in this first game, or in this game. And they get to put their 45-year-old single dude up there in the Empire. Now, marriage status of the Emperor doesn't matter much. Strangely enough, again, this game is not well grounded in the realities. Emperors, like all kings, we're very worried about having heirs, etc. Not an issue here. Anything can be an Emperor, more or less, except an Elector for strange reasons there. Well, now we go, and I'm always going to go counterclockwise because that's uh, the way I like to do things, um, just to be different or something. Uh, I've always played that way. Uh, each player in turn gets to select, and now here's where we have to figure it out. They have to select some place to put a dude like this. I think it's in an electorate, but you got to look this up. So that little helper doesn't help too much. I just played this recently, and indeed it's an electorate space. Then we go to aristocrat, 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 and aristocrat or castle, and then the money. Great. So once, and it's not noted in any way, except maybe by this slight darkening, but they all have a darkening, uh, and that just seems to match the darkening on the counters, each player gets to pick one of the electorates that they want to start the game with. Well, which one is most interesting? They're all kind of interesting. But I'm going to go with the Palatinate because it gives me productive capabilities. I'm going to get more people this way. I think getting people is important, although you can certainly run out of uh, the tiles you have. All right, let's go to blue. Where are they going to drop theirs? Okay, great. Um, more votes is nice, but you may not hold this past uh, phase five, so it becomes less interesting. Likewise with this. So now the question becomes, okay, money, pick a card, the gray eminence, which is kind of neat because that gives you boat votes. I'm going to go with money. Money's always good. Oh, no, because phase one doesn't happen in this game, so that one's knocked out. So, we'll pick, we'll pick the gray eminence. That's kind of a cool one. And now yellow gets theirs. And we only start with enough electors uh, for one for each player. And they have the choice to change ages, which is kind of cool. Uh, to draw a card, uh, to reuse a card that they got to pay for. I would rather get a free action of some sort. So I'm going to take that. All right. So everybody's got something. Red's special bonus was they started with the Elector. Well, now what's the next one? 35 years old, a couple. Okay, the rest are aristocratic spaces. I just want to make sure. I know I checked already, but this doesn't help me. I got to look it up, and I don't play games often enough that this would help. If I did, I probably wouldn't need it. I would probably memorize this because it's not too hard a progression. What's shown here is not difficult at all to remember. I don't know why they made that chip. Okay, Red gets a married couple at age 35 and they can place this anywhere. Anywhere. Mains would be interesting, but a married couple can't move up in mains, so I'm not going to take that. Instead, I'm going to drop them here into Bohemia with the hopes of those two votes maybe being enough to get me two votes for the Emperor. And I've already got the Emperor, so that's kind of cool. Our next one. Well, you don't want to compete with someone directly in this kind of game. Why? Well, primarily because uh, you're wasting your effort. It's a multiplayer game. You don't want to burn effort fighting with someone else necessarily. So, competing two to one is worthwhile, perhaps. This is a married couple. I'll just drop them into here. Blue gets their married couple. And I think they're going to make a competition somewhere. I think they're going to fight green for the platinate. The main thing here being married couples aren't as valuable in a diocese. 
and yellow will do the same here in Brandenburg. And we're beginning to see some conflicts arising. Players are probably not thrilled with each other when this starts happening. Now we go here, and we're at 25 years old single. And we'll grab a victory point. I like victory points. It's not guaranteed. Green wants to do the same kind of thing, though. They're going to grab a diocese as well. Although they might want to grab this, but we'll see. Blue. Well, a tie here doesn't guarantee me any benefits. So this is kind of tricky. Who's blue already fighting against? Blue's already fighting against green. No re and yellow. We'll go into Cologne. Because yellow pissed us off. We might as well do something to them. And now yellow. Yellow finds themselves fighting blue in two places. Uh, but do you want to just fight in the areas you're in? Or do you want to try to expand elsewhere? Green looks like they're kind of getting away with stuff. As does red. I'm going to play it in the red area. Just figuring... I want to open my options there. So now, that was all confused. Okay, those are 25 year olds that I just placed, the singles. Right? Okay, so now we go to the 15 year old, and this is going to be a young couple. And this is kind of a bonus. This is a couple of votes that you can pump into a place that you don't have a lot, and Red's going to do this to increase their holding in mains, because this way they can push him up and get that victory point mark. Green. Well, where does green need help? Green needs help here, and they'll drop it into there. Blue. Blue needs help a lot of places, actually. Uh, blue's not doing too well. They're going to hold Brandenburg off. But that puts it to yellow. And here we get order of play issues. What's up with order of play? You know, this is where these tokens might be helpful. If they chose what the order of play was, for example. Um, if there was some way to randomize that, shake it up. But all there is is, where's the emperor sitting? Well, like an 18xx game, Blue is always beaten by yellow, so they don't want to necessarily ever challenge yellow. Um, and they've made that mistake here in this game. Not really. Yellow opened it up. Yellow was the bright guy. Yellow is going to make sure. Ooh, do they want? See, they've got a chance here. Going against the emperor's not going to work. The emperor gets to choose ties. So, they'll go here. Well, they get a knight. Yeah, they'll go here. They're really focused against blue. And now we go to the knights, and red gets a knight. Now, red is winning in many, many places. They might as well put a challenge up here in Treyarch. Actually, why don't they attack the beleaguered blue. Uh, that's attacking two people. But green is not, yeah. We'll move in here. Blue and yellow are in there. Maybe we can gain it. Green. Green would like to guarantee something for themselves, but there is nothing they can guarantee. They could strengthen their position here. That's always kind of useful. Or I could just drop it in here and add to the mix. Well, red's already in there. I can't win that. I'll go here. Okay, blue. Blue wants to win something. They could go to a tie here. They could go to a tie there. They're already tied here. They're gonna go for the tie against green here. 
You'll notice I'm not playing in the castles, uh, but the only place I could have was here. Red could have played in one. Because these others don't have castles available. And now yellow. Yellow uh, is looking for their challenge. Now they can win if they play here. So they'll do so. And they're in that nice last seat. All right. That's fired us through the setup. I'm going to take a little pause. And then we're going to go and start uh, phase four, which is when all these cards go. And that's going to be kind of intense. Okay, well, let's forge ahead with the, uh, the phase four stuff, which is the actions. And taking a look at red, red's in a position, and I'm gonna turn this off. It seems to like to stay off. Red's in a position where they're currently at kind of the advantage with the emperor, but they wanna take a look at where their votes lie. They've got a, god damn it. Off, at least I don't know, it's a pain in the butt. Um, okay, so we're looking at they don't have a tie here, they'd like to improve their position here. How can they improve it? Well, there's a number of things they can do. One is they could just buy a new person or a new couple to come in there. Another is they could invest in knighthood for him so that then they could make him into a couple. That would cost a total of four. That's a little high for what it's going to do. Uh, so this is where they really want to do, do want to target. I think what they're going to do... If they're just going to buy themselves a new person. That gives them the tie they need, and they can break that tie. Okay, now we go to green. What's green's situation? Well, green is losing here. Oh, no, they're tied there. So they can't control that, and they've got wins everywhere else where they're involved. So where they're tied, they'd like to up their uh, value. So what can you do to up your value in an area where we were tied? Well, he could marry these, but they're old. Uh, this dude's old, and that's not terribly valuable to him. Another thing he could do is he could just buy a knight for a buck. Knights are cool and all. Grabbing a person is more expensive than a knight. Why? Well, yeah. I'm not sure. So a knight is an interesting option for him, but he's got other interesting options. Right now he's at a tie. What he's going to do is he's going to buy... Actually, yeah. See, here's the thing. I don't... I want to use cards, so he's going to buy a, per, uh, a reduction in age. He's going to reduce this guy's age to 35. That increases his long-term uh, hopes. Now, you could say, well, that's not really winning him this. He should be buying a, a, a dude. Maybe, maybe not. Um, he's got a free guy here that he can trigger in. He's got the knights that he can buy for a buck. Cards are a limited resource, so you got to grab them when you got the option. Okay, let's take a look at blue. And blue is in a number of fights. They're here where they're losing. They're here where they're losing. And their best, closest fight is here where they're winning. So, they've got three there. Um, they're in a tie. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot something that happens at the very beginning of the game. The Emperor also places... Yeah. This is great. The Emperor places one of the three Empire City Boards on a space of his choice. Now, that happens before all this, but it's not in the damn scenario, not in the damn setup. Great. All right. Now, I did this in my uh, two-player game, too, and managed to forget it again. I'm just going to drop it here. I don't know. That's not where he'd want it. 
you know, he wouldn't have played what he played. Nobody else would play what they play. So, yeah, we're going to place it here because it's a penalty that he didn't remember. But it's the same situation I got into my game. It's not located on your little card. It's not located in sort of the clear area of the setup that corresponds with that. It's up here. And, yes, you could say what you like. If this thing didn't exist, maybe I wouldn't make that mistake twice in a row. All right. The formatting doesn't help either, though, because it gives all these things a prominence that it doesn't give to this. Obviously, you need an emperor. The second piece, not so obvious, not so easy to remember. Anyway, I don't know where we are. We're on blue. Blue is trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. And they would like to use a card. They probably want a target for getting a mail. Um... Grabbing victory points early. You know, late in the game, that makes sense. Right now, I don't know how much it really does. But here's an interesting one. Moving. I've got blue people who are not helping me. They just aren't. This one in particular is troublesome. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a buck to grab this card. And I'm going to shift him out of there. Now the question comes, do I want to be fighting against yellow or just green? I'm going to shift him into the green space. That gives me control of that space. And I want that because I like the bonus that it has. Gives me eventual control. Now we go to yellow. And yellow is also in... Okay, now, if we look at that card, can we move a knight with it? Let's look it up. I don't think so, because the picturing doesn't look like it. But, you never know. Now, it's a baron or a couple. See, when things don't specify with words, you can't trust them. All right. So now, where's yellow looking? Well, yellow wants to take red on. Yellow's got a real problem, though. And they're heavily beaten back here. So they're going to do the same thing blue did. They're going to buy a movement chip, and they're going to shift a dude here. Now, they could have, if this was filled up, they could have booted him to the castle, but it's not. So now, yellow's got calm uh, under their control. I'm going to zip this one up and send it. And continue with turn one as we go. I need to mark where we are, though. 